Hello everyone, my name is Danny from creatingawebstore.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to install Magento. This is actually going to be a basic install and I'm assuming that your system meets the requirements that are set forth by Magento. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to uh, FTP uh, the files to your server and all that other stuff so if you already know how to do that you can skip to the part of uh, actually installing Magento. If not, stick with me. Uh, so here we are on the Magento uh, system requirements page. Uh, you can access this page by going to magento.com forward slash resources forward slash system dash requirements. Uh, this link is actually on my uh, blog so uh, you can access my blog at creatingawebstore.com and uh, this is basically what your system needs. It needs to be running Linux and it needs to have Apache that um, is amongst these versions. It also needs PHP version uh, 5.2 to 5.4. Note that if you have 5.4 you will need it to be patched. Uh, in this video I will not show you how to patch uh, a 5.4 version since I have 5.3. Uh, you also need uh, some um, extensions enabled and now I'm going to show you how to find out whether these extensions are enabled on your server. Uh, simply go to this link right here. Once on this page, simply download the Magento check file. After you've downloaded the file, simply upload the file to your uh, server. If you're using cPanel, you can do it through cPanel. If not, uh, you can use a free FTP client such as FileZilla or if you have your own FTP client you can use that. In this case I'm using FileZilla and FileZilla can be downloaded at filezilla-project.org. To log in to FileZilla simply enter in your host, your username and password and click on Quick Connect. Once you are connected simply upload the Magento checklist file. As you can see I have already uploaded it earlier. To find out whether your system meets the requirements simply go to your domain forward slash magento-check.php. Again I have a written uh, tutorial of this video on my site creatingawebstore.com and uh, the link is actually in the description of this video. And as you can see uh, my server meets these requirements. If your server doesn't meet these requirements you'll want to get a hold of your uh, web host provider and ask them to enable some of these extensions. Also note that if you are on a virtual private server or on a dedicated server that you would have to install these extensions yourself. Actually whichever extensions are missing now after you've uh, run the check and you know that you're ready to uh, install Magento simply download Magento. In this case I will be downloading the zipped file. Simply click on download. Since I'm on a Mac um, my computer automatically uh, unarchives files so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to upload the whole folder. If you want to upload the folder uh, zip you can do so. You uh, basically just have to upload it to your uh, server for example via file manager if you have cPanel and after uploading you would simply select the file and uh, click on extract. Uh, that's actually a better way of doing it because um, it preserves file permissions and folder permissions but in this case I'm going to use my FTP client and I'm going to uh, upload the extracted version because if you don't have cPanel you will have to extract uh, via shell and many people uh, will, would have a difficult time using shell and this is why I'm just going to upload uh, an extracted version. So I will resume this video once my file has been downloaded. Okay so my Magento folder has been downloaded so now I am ready to upload. Simply locate your Magento folder or compressed file that is. 
Now keep in mind that if you upload the Magento folder directly, your site, for example, will be accessible via your domain forward slash Magento. Now if you want your store to show up the minute someone types in your domain, you will want to upload the files from within the directory to your server. Of course, you can always upload the Magento directory and later move the files from within the directory to the root directory of your server. In this case, I will just upload the files from within so that I don't have to move them later on. So let's wait for these files to upload and we can continue afterwards. Okay everyone, so my files finished uploading and now we can uh, proceed with the install. To begin, let's first create a MySQL database. Uh, if you don't have cPanel, you would uh, likely have to use uh, your host cPanel. So uh, figure out how to create a database and uh, create one. In my case, I will create a database called my store. So it will be I save underscore my store. And now I will create a user, which will be admin. And I'm going to create a password. I'm just uh, creating a password for demonstration purposes, so you would want to uh, create a password uh, that's a little more uh, secure than this. And now I'm going to add my user to the database. And I'm going to give my user all privileges. So now I have my uh, database and I know what it's called and I know the username and I know the password and this is the information that I will need while installing Magento. Now before we actually install Magento there is a php.ini sample that I would like to uh, go over. If you are on a VPS or on a dedicated server you uh, would likely uh, change your uh, php.ini file uh, as root in your uh, main hosting panel. Uh, in this case, uh, since uh, this video demonstration is uh, more of a general demonstration, I'm going to show everyone how to uh, change their uh, php.ini file uh, in the root directory of their site. So in our file manager here, you will see this php.ini sample file. What you will want to do is you will want to rename this file from php.ini.sample to php.ini. Now, depending on your PHP version uh, and on your server, uh, the php.ini file might not get recognized. So you might have to uh, actually uh, change the name of this uh, php.ini file to php5.ini. To find out whether your server recognizes this file, what we're going to do is we're going to create a sample file. This sample file can be created in a text editor or via your file manager on, in your cPanel. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to use my cPanel because it's easier to read and understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our file manager and I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to give that new file the name info.php. And then I'm going to edit that file with the following PHP code. This is actually very simple and it's just one line of code. It's the PHP opening tag and the PHP function PHP info and then the PHP closing tag. To better understand this line you can uh, visit my website 
creatingawebstore.com. Again, the link is in the description of this video. And we're going to save this file. And now I'm going to go to my site, isaveplaza.com forward slash info.php. And right here we can see which loaded configuration file the server is looking at. And that's the one in my home directory. Now, if this file wasn't uh, being recognized, for example, I'm going to rename the file right now back to php.ini.sample and you will see that it's actually reading uh, the system php.ini file. So everything is working fine in this case. In your case, if it's not, remember php5.ini instead of php.ini. Also keep in mind that some servers cache this file so it might take a few minutes before the server actually recognizes the new file. So give it some time and try different things. Try php5.ini and php.ini. So now that all is good, we can start the install. I will also remove the php uh, info file. So here we go. Simply go to your domain forward slash install. And now we are greeted with the Magento installation wizard. Simply uh, select your locale, time zone, currency, and click continue. As for the configuration, now we will need to enter in our uh, database details. Remember, we created this database a little while ago. And this is that information. This is my database name. This is my username and my password. If you'd like to add a table prefix you can. Uh, this is usually done to prevent uh, other Magento installations from conflicting with this installation. And your admin path, if you'd like to access your admin panel via your domain forward slash admin, you leave it at that. If you'd like to change that, you can. Uh, in some cases it might be a smart thing to change the name because this is the most common and uh, many people already know about it. So if you don't want people visiting your admin panel, you can change it to something else. Uh, you can skip uh, base URL validation before the next step. Uh, I'll just leave it as is. And you can also use web server Apache rewrites. Uh, this is to make your uh, store uh, SEO friendly and I will definitely be enabling this and uh, whether you'd like to use secure URLs if you have an SSL certificate which I do recommend uh, you should definitely enable this and uh, enter your protocol which uh, in my case is HTTPS and if you have a secure connection it will likely be the same in your case. Uh, would you like to run the admin interface with SSL? Definitely if you have an SSL certificate uh, skip secure URL validation before the next step. Uh, basically, uh, the Magento install wants to check whether uh, the URL is secure. I'll just uh, skip it. And uh, how would you like to save session data? Would you like to save it via file system or via database? From my experience, database is pretty slow, so I'll just stick with file system. Once you are done, click on continue. So here is a perfect example of things that can go wrong. As you can see, my PDO underscore MySQL extension hasn't been loaded. Why? Well, it's because of the custom php.ini file. See, what happened was is that php.ini file 
uh, actually took over the PHP configuration from the actual uh, server. Now, if you've managed to get past this screen, keep on going. In this case, take a look at how we can fix this. I will go back to my file manager. And I will locate my php.ini file. And I will edit. And I will add these lines below. Keep in mind that the PDO and PDO MySQL extension must be installed in order for this to work. So I will save my changes and try again. Again, this information can be found on my website, creatingawebstore.com, and the link is in the description of this video. Wow, we've managed to get past that part. Now, we simply create our admin account. Simply enter your name, last name, email, username, password, and you confirm your password. Remember, this username and password is for your admin panel, so keep this information handy. And then click on continue. and now I am all set. If you'd like you can take the survey if not you can go to your back end or to the front end of the store but before you do save this encryption key because you will need it in the future and now we are ready to view our front end. As you can see everything installed and now we can also view our back end and we will log in Now before we complete this installation, we will have to change some folder permissions so that we can actually upload images in our store. We will find out which uh, folders we actually have to change the permissions on by visiting the Magento site. I already have this uh, page open. Again, you can visit my site for more details. What we need to do is we need to edit two uh, directories with 777 permissions. So let's go to our uh, control panel or we can actually use our uh, FileZilla here. And what we need to do is we need to change media and var to 777. And now we are ready to upload our first item. We're just going to add a basic item, nothing special. Note that I had to install Flash for the Browse and Upload buttons to appear. If your Browse and Upload buttons don't appear, you will have to install Flash. And as you can see, our image uploaded successfully, which means everything is working fine. This Magento installation installed successfully. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and also be sure to check out creatingawebstore.com.